Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and Salim Lang de P. Matro, which translates to Don't Cry for Salim the Lame, is a 1989 Hindi language drama that was written and directed by Saeed Agda Mirza. It won the National Film Award for Best Feature Film in Hindi as well as Best Cinematography. This was my first exposure to filmmaker Saeed Agda Mirza, who has made several notable films in the so-called parallel cinema movement. Going into it, I had absolutely no idea what to expect. A few weeks ago, I just looked up all the Indian movies that are available on the streaming platform Mubi and made a list with the titles that look promising. When I clicked on this one, I was immediately hooked because it doesn't waste a second and instantly begins with the voiceover narration of our protagonist Salim. This small figure in the middle of the frame who's confidently and somewhat stylishly walking in the middle of the street. There's an immediate realism, grittiness, but also style to this opening moment. Salim Langdepe Matro tells the story of the titular character Salim, played by Pavan Malhotra in his breakthrough role. Salim is a simple young man, uneducated and with no actual job. He's making his money with small crimes like extortion and robbery, and he seems to be primed to climb the career ladder in the criminal underworld. Along with his two best friends Pira and Abdul, played by Martin Tishpande and Ashutosh Govarika. The film does a nice job establishing and introducing us to this world, the small part of the city of Mumbai. It is set in a working class milieu with a predominantly Muslim population. And religion, or rather the ongoing conflict between Hindus and Muslims, emerges as the film's main topic. That's where its heart really lies. And that's also what makes it so timely even more than 30 years later. It's a film from another era and its tone, atmosphere and style firmly places it as such. Which is also why I love watching all the films. Yet its themes and the burdens of its characters are still relevant. The film was made in a time when Hindu nationalist ideology was on the rise again, with communal riots oftentimes leading to hundreds of people dying. Our protagonist Salim is a Muslim who just happens to be a Muslim, and at the beginning he's not really involved or practicing his religion. There are moments that show how easily someone as young and somewhat naive as him can be influenced. Salim is a pity criminal because he didn't really have many options, and in this climate of religious hatred he could also probably be radicalized by the wrong people. But Salim is also someone who is genuine good at heart. He has the best intentions for his younger sister, he wants to help his family, he cares for his buddies and he also just likes to hang out and smoke some weed with his peace-loving hippie friend Joan. Salim is at a crucial point in his life and he has to decide which path he wants to follow. There's this inner and outer conflict. On one hand you have the things you should do, lead a good and honest life, love thy neighbor. But on the other you have these difficult and very real circumstances you live in. The lack of opportunity, poverty, an atmosphere of hate. There are several events that make Salim question his path and the biggest factor is without a doubt the character of Aslam, played by Rajendra Gupta. He is the one Salim's sister wants and should marry, someone who studied and is now working an honest job as a newspaper proofreader. In a pointed early scene, Salim visits Aslam to see if he's the right one for his sister. But when he finds out that Aslam only makes a very small salary, despite his college degree, with a heavy heart he has to tell him that he wishes for someone better for his sister. Which is of course quite ironic. The one without a proper job is making more money doing shady things and is absolutely baffled and perplexed that someone like Aslam, an intelligent, well-educated man, is barely making enough. But this won't be the last conversation between the two of them and it's Aslam who more or less functions as the movie's consciousness and way to transport its message. And I have to say, while I of course am very much on board with that message and appreciate a film directly addressing these important topics, for my own taste it becomes also a little bit too didactic. Too much a message movie. I think it's great when it lets its characters and setting breathe, when we follow Salim and his friends through the streets, when we see them act the way they do. These guys are just great together and there's a certain energy and panache to it. And Makran Tishpande just has this perfect look for someone who should be in movies. When we get immersed into this low-class urban setting, there's this almost documentarian vibe to it. Director Said Akdam Mirza has made several documentaries throughout his career and the focus on young people and their place in society has been a reoccurring thing as well. And that's where this movie really shines for me. Pavan Malhotra is great as Salim, even if he mostly has just this one angry and frustrated look on his face. But he's still such a big screen presence and you're still able to see past that outer appearance and feel a huge deal of sympathy for this tragic hero who tries to put his life around. 
when he's confronted with the horrible things going on around him, when he's exposed to the richer parts of society, or when he's just contemplating alone at the water. These moments make the movie for me. The scenes with Aslam are important and I think it's good to just directly address certain things, especially at the time of the movie's release, but I can't deny that it felt too preachy and like a school class for me. Thankfully, the movie has many wonderful and powerful moments as well, like our three friends breaking out in this little dance about their newfound hope for their future. So in German I'd say Salim Lang de Pematro ist eine starke Milieustudie, eingefangen in kraftvollen, lebensnahen Bildern, toll gespielt und noch immer aktuell. Mir persönlich war er aber auch ein wenig zu offensichtlich belehrend in manchen Momenten. I give Salim Lang de Pematro 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.1, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Salim Lang de P. Matro. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.